All right, guys, stay tuned. Towards the end of this video, I've got a special deal for you. And I know that you're probably not gonna wanna watch the whole video, but that's why at the bottom of all the videos that we publish, we have what we call chapters. And you can kind of scroll through and it'll describe what each part of the video is. And you can just click on the part that you wanna skip to. So it's a long video, it's a lot of how-tos, but uh, definitely check out the end of the video for my special deal for you. Guys, I made a really, really bad decision that could have been pretty bad if, uh, if the wrong thing happened. And I kind of feel like sometimes, you know, when, when, when something's going wrong and we're not paying attention to it, God gives us like a gazillion signs, like, come on, wake up, pay attention. And that's kind of what happened in this situation. Our, um, our boat weighs about 3,000 pounds. Uh, it's a pretty big boat. I bought it years ago when I worked in the corporate world and it's just something we've always hung on to. We don't use it a whole lot, um, especially with our youngest one. We just didn't take it out for like five years. And then we finally took it out a couple times last year and um, you know, I was getting a little nervous of the trailer. That should have been my first sign. I should have been paying closer attention to the trailer. If I had an uneasy feeling about the trailer and I didn't want to tow it very far, I shouldn't have wanted to tow it 30 minutes to a lake. Here's your sign. But I had an uneasy feeling about the trailer just because I hadn't, you know, really looked it over for a long period of time. And I know that when things sit around, things happen to them. They break down as they sit around. And that's exactly what I found going on with this trailer. The, the second sign that we had with the trailer was on our way to the lake. Um, and we had a great weekend with the boys. Um, we, we were able to take the boat out on the lake, but on the way to the lake, uh, one of the tra uh, trailer tires blew out, and it blew out because it, the, the tire was dry rotted. So my tires, they look pretty good. They, they still have some decent tread on them, but I replaced these tires maybe eight or nine years ago. When, and so um, the, the last time these tires were even looked at was back when I replaced them. And they've dry rotted. And what's interesting is you don't see the dry rot on the outside of these tires. You see the dry rot cracking between the tread of the tires. And so what happened was one of the tires, the tread just started to come apart, started uh, flapping around, hit the axle and just kind of wrapped up and boom, blew out. And so we had a big blowout and uh, the tires are so old and the, the trailer's so old that it's, it's rusted. So I literally had to have a body shop. We, luckily we got a flat tire right in front of a body shop, but they literally had to cut off some of my lugs to get the tire off the car. And then we just put on a, a spare that they had at the shop. I need to return that to them to get the thing back on the road. And so then we took it to the lake and we continued with our weekend and I, I thought, well, I'll just get some tires and we'll put new tires on the trailer. But then something else happened. As I was backing the trailer into the boat ramp to get the boat out of the water, I realized that my bunker boards were rotted out. One of them was broken in half. And I told my wife, I was like, I can't put the boat on rotted out bunker boards, especially when one is broken in half and falling off of the trailer. So we, we just put the boat back in the, the water. We took it over to a marina. I bought some new boards to bring, come, bring it home to rebuild the bunker of the trailer. Now let me tell you, this thing is like opening up a big can of worms because we get it home and uh, the, uh, the trailer is rusted out. 
on the, where the bunker boards attach. So uh, on, on one of them, it was, it was like paper thin. I could bend it with my fingers. And so you're talking about putting a 3,000 pound boat on these bunkers on this trailer and they're all rusted out. And then as I, you know, continued to examine the trailer, you know, on the underside of the frame, I started noticing massive rust spots that were rusted through, you know, a good portion of, you know, six inch portion where you just had this big hole in the frame and it was working its way up the sides of the, these are like uh, steel two by fours that they're built out of. And so I just had these massive rust spots throughout the trailer. It was so rusted in the backside of the trailer that our license plate blew off somewhere. And I noticed some, uh, I noticed some surface uh, rust up here on the tongue of the trailer. And uh, it, it just wasn't looking good. So I thought, well, I'll take it down to a welder and, and have him look at it and see what we can do with this. And that's what I ended up doing. And I'm glad I did because the, the tongue of the trailer was rusted through halfway on one side. The other side was starting to get there. And so this trailer was a very dangerous trailer. And sometimes when you look at rust and you see a little bit of surface rust on a trailer, you, you, you don't think anything of it until you take one of those air guns to it and it blows right through the whole thing. And then you realize that you really had no support on the tongue of that trailer. This thing was on the verge of breaking. And if it had broken, um, I could have endangered somebody. I could have lost our boat, which, you know, we, you know, we enjoy it. It's an old boat, but we enjoy having it for the, the moments that we do use it. And so um, what I've ended up doing here is I'm completely redoing this trailer because a new trailer will cost you uh, for a boat our size, a 21 foot boat that weighs about as much as our boat. It'll cost you between four and five thousand dollars to get a new trailer. And um, this trailer was custom made for our boat. So the, the, the uh, bunker is designed for the hull of our boat. Our boat is an older boat. It has uh, something called a fast track hull. I got it, you know, way back when because it's actually kind of a classic design for Regal. And so um, I wanted to work with this trailer. I don't have $5,000 for a new trailer. And so I took it to the welder and I let him kind of take out the bad spots um, reinforce the frame. We completely replaced the tongue of the trailer. So uh, all of that welding has been done. The, on the other side where things were rusting out real bad, we put in big steel plates. And even the back side of the trailer was, was rusting out real bad. Um, so I think that, you know, you, you put a lot of weight on the axles of a trailer when you're towing a boat, but these other areas are also very important to maintain and, and make sure that they're not rusting and falling apart. So <clears throat> now that that's been welded, I can't give you pointers on welding something like this because I took it to a professional. Uh, this, I wouldn't want to replace a tongue on a trailer myself. They did, you know, reinforce it a little bit when they, when they replaced the tongue. And um, I think they did a great job uh, welding it back together. But what I'm doing now is now that it's welded, you've got uh, fresh welds that are open to the elements. And if anybody who knows anything about raw steel, it doesn't take much before you start seeing rust on all of that again. In fact, just from it sitting in the driveway for a day, it's already showing a lot of signs of rust on all the welded spots. And if you allow that to happen, it's gonna continue to rust through. So as part of this trailer restoration, what I'm gonna do next is paint the trailer to repaint this trailer, what I've started doing is I've taken off all of the strips that were designed for um, giving you traction in wet conditions because I can't paint over those. I'm gonna leave the old tires on while I kind of go through and do what I'm gonna do next, but I need to finish taking off uh, a couple bunker boards. I've already taken off the other bunker boards and I'm gonna sand this down the best that I can and just get it, the surface is cleaned up the best I can. And once I get the surface prepped from sanding and, and washing and, and clearing everything off, um, I'm gonna use a Rust-Oleum um, primer paint first, and then I'm gonna go back over the entire trailer with a Rust-Oleum black with a little bit of a, a little bit of elbow grease. I think that we can save this old trailer for a fraction of the price of a new trailer and make it last for several years.
So your your bunker boards, which lay across the bunker, should be really be replaced every about every five years because they do rot. It's just wood. Even if it's treated, it, it'll eventually rot. Uh, these boards were uh, even the screws were rusting out of them. Um, I'm having a hard time getting them to unscrew, so I'm going to have to go about this a different way to get these off. But uh, for the most part, this board just kind of pulled apart here. I just have three screws up top here that I need to somehow get out. So these tires were rusted on here so bad. Uh, when I had the blowout, the guy who stopped, who, the body shop that actually helped me get this uh, taken off and, and a new tire put on, they had to uh, actually come in and cut this lug bolt to get the tire off. And then when I brought it home, I couldn't get the lugs off the other tires and I had to take it down to a tire shop and they broke like three or four more lugs uh, trying to get it off. So I've got basically um, some new lugs here. These just came from tractor supply. I think they're zinc plated and what happens is when you have zinc and you have steel and you get them mixed together They just start to weld together um, When when you're when you go into salt water, but these are pretty much the same size uh, This one's stripped out. That's why they had to cut it. It started just spinning in there and to get the old one off so I'll uh, I'll show you here real quick how we get one out. This one's been cut through pretty bad so I'm going to replace this one and see I've got one. I've got enough lugs to replace all the bad ones. These two were, were cut through. Um, so what I'm going to do is just take a hammer and uh, tap it. The other one came out a lot easier than this one. Need to replace those caps too. And then you'll take your new one and it'll slide in through the back. You'll match up your uh, your threads. And then you'll have to knock it in with a hammer as well. I'm gonna use a smaller hammer to knock that in. So I tapped them in from the back side. One of them I was having a hard time going all the way in, but when I put my wheel on and I really tightened down on the lug nut, um, I should be able to get that one through. So this is another issue that I just found. Um, it looks like my, my wheel fender here got bent up. I'm not sure if that was part of the tire going flat or what, but I need to get it bent back. All right, so at this point in time, I've gone through and I've removed as much of the surface debris as I could. There's still some stuff that I'm finding on here that I might want to just quickly try and remove, some, some old stickers um, that I could quickly just try and get off before I start painting. But um, then I went through and I, I pressure washed the whole thing to remove as much gunk and, and dirt as I possibly could. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect unless you get a sandblaster out here and sandblast this whole thing or you spend weeks 
<laughs> weeks of your time sanding the whole thing down and it's just gonna rust as you sand. So um, at this point, I'm calling it good on most of my surface prep for the paint. I am actually using tractor implement paint on my trailer, so it should be a little tougher. Uh, any surface rust that I didn't get to, it should help stop the rust, but you know, you still wanna do as much cleanup as you can. So I'm gonna do my last final touches to it. I've got it up on some cinder blocks to make it a little easier for me to paint, and then we'll get to painting. Trailer is starting to look a lot better with a coat of primer paint on it. So I tried using one of these little um, air gun paint sprayers that I got for 30 bucks. And it worked for a couple minutes and then it stopped working. And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, that's because Charlie, you don't know what you're doing with that thing. And you're probably right. But um, in either case, I didn't use this paint sprayer. I think if anything, if I ever bought one of these again, I'd get one of the gravity fed ones instead of this design. And I, I may have to like thin it some more or something. I, I just don't know, I don't know. But uh, luckily I have a, a Graco uh, paint sprayer. It's the Graco Magnum. And that thing worked fantastic. I just blew right through this entire thing. Uh, in a matter of minutes. You spend more time getting the paint and sprayer set up and prepping your space than you actually do painting, which is the funny thing about all this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go through here and put on the color. It, it rained last night, some stuff got onto the, uh, the surface, so I'm gonna clean that off. And uh, the black paint, will uh, I'll make sure I get better coverage than I did with the uh, primer. The primer did pretty good. I covered a lot of it, but I could see where I missed a couple spots or uh, something was flaking off, wasn't done right. But uh, the black paint, I'll make sure I get everything covered on. So I'm getting closer to getting this thing done. I just need to get the paint on it, the color, and then wheels and all the other parts. So now I'm going to replace the bunker boards to our trailer. The bunker boards are what the boat pretty much sits on. Not quite sure. I measured the length of this board. I've got several different lengths that I need to accommodate. And this has an angle on it, so I'm going to try and line up the angle real quick and figure out what angle I need to set my saw to. like it's just a straight up 45 degree angle. So I've got two to cut about this length and then I believe the others are a little shorter. All right so I've got all of my bunker boards uh, cut and ready for the next step which will be putting the carpet onto the bunker boards but before I do that and I get the glue out I am going to go ahead and cut new um, boards for my wheel wells and we'll carpet everything all at once. So I'm going to move these and grab a piece of plywood and work on those wheel wells.
I completed several of these bunker boards yesterday. Uh, I was going to show you real quick how you put your carpeting, which is basically like a padding to protect the boat against the wood, onto the bunker boards. And if you're wondering what material you should be using, um, I've been getting this stuff. It's called Marine Raider, and it's just called Trailer Bunk Padding. Imagine that. And you can get it in two different, multiple different size rolls. I am using the 12 inch rolls and the 18 inch rolls. So basically what I'll do is I'll take an end and staple it. You want, there's there's a fluffy side and a, and a firm side. You want the firm side against the wood. And I'll just staple an end on there. That way I can pull it tight. And then I'm just going to pull it across and figure out where it's going to be cut at this end. The nice thing about this stuff is that it cuts super easy. So I'm just going to bring my knife across there. Alright. Now I'm going to flip it back over and just kind of toss this off to the side. Okay, so for the glue, I am using a tech, tech skill set indoor outdoor carpet adhesive. And you can get this stuff at Lowe's or wherever. It's, um, it's made for outdoor use and it actually says as one of the uses on there to use it on boats. And so I think it's good for what we're, the purpose of what we're trying to do here. This stuff is pretty nasty. If you get it on your hands, it is foul. You're just gonna take scoops of it and coat your board. Make sure you have nothing around because this ruins everything it gets on. I tried coming in and, and putting a lot of glue down along the sides of these and it just turned into a big mess. If you are better with arts and crafts and have a lot less thumbs than I do, by all means, glue the sides, but you're just gonna run your trowel through it to create some lines. It's pretty easy to do. Okay, and my suggestion is once you do this, get the glue far away from your workspace. Trust me. I'm giving you this advice from experience. I ruined a couple pieces of the sheeting yesterday, or carpet, due to uh, getting it on the carpet in the wrong spot. Like I said, this glue is pretty vicious stuff. And you're gonna just kind of set this down, try and give it a nice firm stretch cross. This is why I stapled the one side at the beginning. Then you're gonna just flip your board over. And go ahead and staple your far end. And now you're on to just stapling on the carpet. For this type of application, I don't think you can put too much staples in there. For the ends, I've just been folding them however it makes the most amount of sense. I don't have any good advice on that one. Okay, so installing these bunker boards shouldn't be that difficult, a little time consuming. What I'm going to do is uh, put some holes in so that I could screw through from the back side with some stainless steel screws into this uh, piece of wood here and that'll hold it up and that way I don't have anything sticking out on this side that could damage the boat because the, the point of these here is to help provide you know just some padding and, and buffering in case the boat hits it in some sort of way. Just 
line that up so it looks good. And come in from the back side and screw it in. The last guy that did this used just straight steel screws and they they rust over time and deteriorate the wood as they rust. So if you can find some stainless ones, it'll last a lot longer. Okay, so on my main bunker boards, what I'm gonna do is use the old bunker boards as kind of a stencil. So I know whereabouts I should line up my holes. I want them lined up pretty much with that line right there. This will help ensure that I'm placing these boards as close to the previous position as I can. And I'll measure out the center on the front of the board as well. Okay, so my bunker boards are just going to attach with a lag bolt. And I put a wa I'm gonna put a washer on each of these lag bolts just to help make sure it stays secure. And um, what I'm gonna do is line up the end of this first board and put a lag bolt in it and then go down to the far end and line that up, put a lag bolt in it, and then from there I should be able to just work my way down the board. So I'm going to replace my trailer lights. A lot of them were out. And if you have a boat trailer, a lot of the times these lights come, the, the submersible lights to go in the water, come kind of pre-sealed. So you can't just pull them open and change a light bulb. And for that reason, I'm actually using LED bulbs uh, this time around. Uh, they'll last a lot longer. And um, see, this one is just a it's an Optronics LED. I've got two of these small red ones, two of the small orange side marker ones, and then I've got some new ones to go on the back side here. And if you remember my last one, I had to cut these out in order to get them off because they had rusted on there so badly. But I'm hoping you know, this time I'll Remember to replace them before it gets to that point. These just go on with a 10 millimeter nut on the back side. And that's about it. Now replacing the back ones with the LEDs as well. And once I get these in place, I will work on my wiring. These backlights just kind of pop right in there. Thought they did. So on the back side of the trailer, your side markers are red. As you work your way up the trailer towards the front, these indicator markers are going to be uh, amber. And that's just a, I guess the proper way of putting these on there.
For our wiring harness, I did not get the right connectors for this. Um, now, a lot of people would prefer to run a whole new wire down here when they get this far on a project, and that could make a lot of sense. Um, fortunately, I don't have the time to sit there and try and fish this wire through, and I think that this wire is going to be okay. I'm just going to cut in there. I mean, that's, that's still good copper in there. So. Um, what I'm going to do is just use the old wiring harness that's running through here and connect a new connector up top here. Now when you're doing a, especially a trailer that's going to be uh, used for aquatic purposes, you really should have a better uh, connector than what I'm about to use here. But these will at least get me by for now, and then I can change out how I've done these connections a little later. Sometimes you gotta work with what you have. Wrap these up real good with electrical tape for now. Of course, it's not going to take long for this to corrode the way I'm doing it. You really need those uh, connectors that you can heat shrink around the wires and protect from moisture for this. Okay, so real quick, when you connect your wire harness here, uh, you'll notice that there's a short white wire off of this harness, a short white wire off of this harness on each side. That is a ground wire, and your lights will not work unless you hook this ground wire up. So what I have done is I have actually connected the ground wire from where it connects to the vehicle uh, right onto the harness here, so it connects down there. Well can't see it on that side. There it is. And then I've taken a final ground wire and I've actually wrapped it, it's a black wire by the time you get to this point, I've wrapped it up here and screwed it to the frame up here. And this is a little looser than I'd like, but that was a bear to get on there. So um, this is a, this is how you hook up a ground wire. And once you do this, your lights will turn on fine. I've, I've seen some people complain that they bought new lights and they don't work or they wired up their trailer and it's not working. You gotta connect that ground and you have to have it grounded to the frame because each of these lights independently grounds to the frame and that connects the circuit. Now I'm sure that there are many people with different strategies on how to ground these. And um, <laughs> I know that there's somebody working, sitting on their mom's couch right now saying that's not how you do it, but that's how I did it and it works. All right, so now I'm gonna put on our new hand winch. This one does up to 3,200 pounds. Our boat weighs 3,000 pounds. Now, because the entire weight of the boat isn't actually on the winch, it, you, know, you could do one that's 1,700 pounds, but I generally like to try and go a little over the top if I can. And it's only maybe $15, $20 more for the bigger winch, so I don't see why you wouldn't just go ahead and get the bigger one. This winch did not come with uh, nuts for the bolts. My bolts are welded onto the bottom here. So I'm gonna go find my old nuts. And uh, I think that'll be a pretty good looking winch. But I got this winch off of Amazon, and um, there are two, different locations where you can install your your lever. And from what I could tell is it'll wind faster if it's back here, but you're gonna have 
I believe, a little more leverage if it's down there, or is it the other way around? Yeah, I think you get a little more leverage with it down here, so. Let's see, we'll put this on. I guess that'll work, or should it go on this way? Instructions would be nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this way. I think. No, we'll go this way. You really don't make it easy to get in there. You to take this wheel off to get to that bolt under there. That'll work. It says on here, hand winch, 3,200 pounds, not for lifting humans. Noted. All right, so for my top roller, I didn't replace any of the rollers on our trailer. Um, the top roller, though, really wasn't bad to begin with. So we'll just go ahead and put that back on there. So, there we go. that's got some movement. Okay, so for these tires, I actually just ordered these off of Amazon, and um, it's, it's funny because I found this company, it's called E-Custom Rims, and they're actually in one of my old hometowns. So I thought it would be good to order from them. Uh, these are just Trailer King RST tires. They're, they're not bad tires, uh, especially if you're you know not planning on going super long distances, but they're, they're pretty decent tires. They come with a decent warranty and they all come with rims. And for the price I got these, I got them for about $235 a pair. And um, I think by the time I was looking at replacing one of my rims, which wouldn't match, and having tires installed, I was still at about the same price. So at least this way I get new rims on all four tires and I could throw them on myself.
right, guys, here's the deal. We have been trying to raise funds for Meet My Neighbor Productions, which is our nonprofit that goes around the country and films small farms and tries to promote small farms, tries to educate people. We have been trying to uh, acquire a camper for that nonprofit because we, uh, we've spent too much money on our traveling costs uh, for the nonprofit to really be successful. We, we really need to get a camper somehow, some way. And so what I am willing to do is if this boat sells, I am willing to donate the proceeds of this boat sale to the nonprofit to buy that camper. Because I actually think this nonprofit's really important and um, you know that's something that I'm willing to do. All right, so here's the special deal. This boat is a Regal 2100, it's 1997. It had the fast track, whole design is actually a classic. Uh, the retail value of this boat it's around 22,000 private sales. It's between 8 to 20,000, depending on the condition of the boat and what options the boat has on it. This particular boat is the Volvo Penta motor, which is the higher end motor of the boat, and it has a Volvo Penta outdrive. I had the Volvo Penta motor replaced. It probably only has about 50 hours on it. Um, so it's a relatively new motor in this boat. Mechanically, this boat is extremely sound. Uh, it does have the carburetor when, it, when it's been sitting and it's cold, for whatever reason, it sticks open, so you kind of have to loosen the flap up, otherwise you'll have a, a very hard cold start, but otherwise, it starts up each time. So you've got about a uh, about an $1,800 tower. It might be more than that. I'll, I'll actually post the actual numbers up here. Um, and then you've got a, a light bar, sound bar. The lights are, the they need to be replaced. I was gonna put LEDs in, but the sound is awesome. The sound on this boat is actually, I've got an amp, speakers and an $800 stereo head. It's uh, a fusion yacht stereo system. I actually have eight speakers installed and two more speakers that I was going to install. So realistically, just between the sound system and the wakeboard tower, you're looking at close to $3,000 worth of add-ons on top of the value of the boat. Got a trailer that I just dumped $2,000 into. Of course, the, uh, the, the tax value on the trailer is probably only about 1,500 bucks, but um, you get the trailer with the boat comes with it. We also have all different sizes of life jackets from uh, from very small children all the way up to adult. Um, and nothing for extremely large adults but uh, you know I'll throw in all the life jackets we have. I'll throw in the wakeboards we have, the, the skis because we won't need those anymore. I'll even throw in a couple ugly sticks uh, on the sale of this boat. So you're probably wondering what I'm gonna ask for this boat and because this is a special deal for a special purpose to raise funds for our nonprofit to be able to buy a camper and travel and film these farms, these farms that are, uh, these farmers that are trying to do the right thing and they're they're trying to grow a business. We're out there trying to help that. Um, Ten thousand bucks for the whole thing. I will, will be losing money on this boat. I will be losing a substantial amount of money. And let me tell you something. If you're going to buy a boat this size, this is a 21 foot boat. And it's actually extraordinarily wide. It's one of the widest boats in this class. If you're going to buy any boat for less than 10 grand, you better come with a paddle. This boat does not need a paddle, I can tell you that, because it has been taken care of. It's been winterized each year, and it is just a fantastic boat. We, our family absolutely loves this boat, but we also recognize that what we're doing, the importance of what we're doing for small farmers and trying to promote them, trying to educate the public is really important to us. And so by getting rid of this, which just took up a bunch of my time, and putting those funds towards our nonprofit to really help it get going a little more, uh, we're willing to make that sacrifice. And it creates a good deal for you. Anything you wanna do above $10,000 will give you a tax write-off for the nonprofit. And here's the other part of this deal. I will drive this boat within 100 miles of, let's say, Raleigh, North Carolina. So if you're interested, you wanna buy it, and you're willing to put down a deposit, um, we will discuss what that is depending on where I'm dr driving this thing to. I will drive you and, and meet you with the boat. Because we're talking about, you know, trying to help you with delivery, what I'd be willing to do is uh, do a non-cut video of going through the boat from putting it in the water to starting it up to driving it on the water, showing you all the, the areas of the boat so that you can feel comfortable with what you're getting here to the best that we, we can possibly do for you. And I also have the paperwork from the motor being replaced. I have 
titles to the trailer, titles to the boat, whatever it is that we need to do, we've got. So that's the deal. Let's get this thing sold so we can put those funds into our nonprofit and take this, this, uh, this venture of ours to the next level.